Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jack here from Jacktastic PCs, and today we're going to be continuing our server setup. We just got to change a few settings, and then we'll be all set to go ahead and install Windows 10 onto our virtual machine, or in your case, a computer in your home, uh, and then we'll join it to our domain. So let's get started. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and power on uh, the virtual machine server. Also, if you guys notice, my camera's in a different place. I'm actually using my webcam right now just because the file sizes are smaller and it'll just be a little bit easier to edit. Uh, but so now the server is starting up. Or it should be. Here we go. Uh, and so we're just going to sign in and continue doing what we were doing last time. All right, and so now we can go ahead and sign in. Uh, just put in your password. And now that we're in, the server manager is going to pop up. We can ignore that for right now. And the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is right-click on this, Open Network and Sharing Center, uh, click on Ethernet, and then Properties. Uh, I know I already kind of went over this in the last video, but I didn't do it properly, or at least I didn't set it up the way I liked it to be. I'm actually just going to go back and actually put this on the same subnet uh, as the rest of my network. So I just changed it to 192.168.1.15 for uh, both that and that. Alright, and so now that's all set. Uh, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to set up a user directory folder so that when users sign into the domain, uh, they actually have part of their files stored on this folder. Uh, we're actually not going to use that folder. We're going to go ahead to our um, disk that I created. If I go to disk management, we should have another disk here. There we go. I'm just going to do that, and it should format. If not, I'll just format it myself. Bam, 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 bam. Format disk. All right. Now it's there. We're going to go ahead and name this um, mass storage. Alright, and so in this folder uh, we're going to create a new folder called user dir, just like that, the one on the desktop. And we're going to go ahead and properties, sharing, and then we're going to go to advanced sharing, share this folder, and then just throw a dollar sign at the end of it, and that'll make it so if someone goes to the server uh, on the network, it's not going to show up like that. Uh, they won't be able to actually see it. So it'll be kind of like a hidden folder. And then just apply full control to all. All right. And then apply. Okay. Then go to security. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to disable inheritance. Uh, remove all inherited permissions from this. Apply. Okay. And close. Actually, let me just double check. Alright, groups and names, and then we're just going to add everyone. Alright, that's all. Uh, what else do we need to do? We just need to go into, we can close that, group policy management. We're going to edit. And then policies, window settings, folder redirection. And now we could redirect any of these folders we want to. I'm just going to go ahead and redirect the desktop. So just do basic and then right here, create a folder for each user under the root path. And then for the root path, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to computer right here, properties. And then we're just going to grab this, the network path. And that's what we're going to paste into here. And then we're just going to go back here. You can do that. And then select this. This is very important. And OK. So now when a user signs in, all the data that's on their desktop is actually going to be installed or um, copied to whatever um, desktop they sign into. Uh, one last thing I'd like to show you guys how to do is actually set up a software installation uh, so that when they sign in it'll automatically install certain programs. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my Google Chrome uh, Enterprise Installer. You need .msi files for this. Alright, and so I've gone ahead and I've grabbed the um, Google Chrome MSI Installer. Uh, it'll be type 
Windows installer. Uh, and so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to click on software installation under computer configuration, policies, and software settings. We're going to right click in here and new package. So we're just going to go to uh, the shared folder for this uh, installers folder and then we're just going to select it and then just assigned and it'll take a second and it'll show up there. Once that's all set we can go ahead and uh, exit out and that'll be all set. Once again, just make sure that this is enforced. So that's about all the setting up we're going to do here on this server. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to hop over to the other virtual machine and go ahead and install Windows 10 and join it to our domain. So this virtual machine can stay open. All right, and so now I'm going to go ahead and launch this other virtual machine. And so we're just going to go ahead, we're going to install Windows 10 and then really quickly join it to the domain. It'll only take a few seconds. So you can just select what you need here. Uh, I'm going with all these. Next, install now. Uh, then it's going to ask us for a product key. Uh, if you don't have one, just select that, or you can go ahead and put one in if you do. I'm just going to hit I don't have a product key. And then it's going to ask us to select the version. I'm going with Windows 10 Pro. And you have to select Pro, Enterprise, or Education. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to join it to a domain or do remote desktop and stuff like that. So just go ahead, select that. And then it's going to ask us to select um, to read through and accept the license terms, you can just click that. And then always do a custom Windows installation. Select the disk you want, which is drive zero in our case. And then this will take a few minutes, and when it's all done, we'll be right back. All right, and so now it's almost done installing everything. Uh, it's just going to go through this little installing updates feature and then finishing up. This will take a second and you guys can just go ahead and remove your Windows installation media once this little box at the bottom pops up. So you just hit restart now and then you can go ahead and eject your Windows 10 installation media. Now Windows 10 is going to go ahead and boot up now and then we're going to get into the configuration stage. And so I'm going to take a little minute to talk to you guys about my PC. Uh, it's got the dual Xeon E5 2670s in there and it, I, I absolutely love it. It's a monster. It's an absolute beast. Uh, but I'm letting my older brother uh, borrow my GTX 750 Ti which has been my graphics card for almost two years now and uh, I'm currently using a GTX 280 and my room is noticeably warmer. People joke about the 480, the GTX 480 Fermi being hot. Holy shit, this thing is super hot fire. Uh, we had to clean it out because it was hitting 96 degrees Celsius and not thermal throttling, so it was either gonna catch on fire or uh, stop working. And uh, now it doesn't get that hot, but it's DirectX 9, so I can't play many new games. It's cool. It's whatever. I'm just going to save up for a GTX 1060. Let me just clarify. I'm saving up for a GTX 1060 slash RX 480, depending on which one's better. So just wanted to clear that up. So the installation is pretty much done. Uh, the screen should be popping up any minute now, asking us to configure everything. So... Let's get configurating. All right, and so I'm just going to go ahead and use the express settings. If you want to take the time, you can go through and uh, change this up a little bit more, but it's the express settings are typically the best settings uh, to go for. Hi, Windows 10. How are you doing? I'm happy to be here, too. Why aren't you sitting on me? Well, I can update you with some critical stuff if you know what I mean. Ooh, do you want to get a little more comfortable? All right, and so now we can go ahead and configure the settings. All right, so right here, you're just going to select my work or school owns it. And then uh, we're going to join a local Active Directory domain. Next, uh, who's going to use this PC? Just name it admin, which is different than administrator, uh, and it just makes life a lot simpler, so name it admin. Then for the password, I'm just going to go ahead and use the same one I used over on my server. Uh, I typically recommend using this. And um, now we're going to get into the desktop and we're going to change a few settings and we'll be all set for replication, which is going to be the next video. Uh, we're going to uh, 
extract an image of this current setup and then with our Windows Server we're going to set up remote deployment services so that we can uh, just put a PC connected to the network boot off of the network uh, which is called pixie booting and install Windows from there with a cloned image with everything we need all set to go alright and so let's start we're gonna go ahead and we're on the Windows 10 desktop now the very first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to go here actually I lied the first thing we're gonna go and do is go to properties we're gonna change the desktops name uh, right here we can actually do it all at once so the very first thing we're gonna do is rename it to VM desktop 001 it's very important to keep everything organized if you were doing a workstation it could be a WRK for workstation uh, so on and so forth and then domain we're joining jacktastic.net before we do that we are gonna have to go to uh, here and then here and then w all we have to do very simple is you go down here and set this to the IP address of your server so 192.168.1.15 and then the alternate once again just Google's so you can go ahead close that and now if we hit OK it should join us to the domain and change the name all we have to do is put in the administrative uh, stuff and it's gonna join us to the domain bam and then it's gonna ask us to restart the computer close and restart now and that's how simple it is uh, and so once it restarts we're actually gonna go ahead and log into the account that I created previously alright and so now it's gonna take a few seconds uh, but then we're gonna be able to get in something that we're gonna set up in the next video oh sorry I got really close to the mic there really up close and personal uh, something that we're gonna set up in the next video is going to be a uh, license agreement or a um, legal agreement that before people log in it says blah 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 you are using this domain whatever whatever if you're using this you must agree to these rules this is great to set up for a workplace environment because it gives the end user a bit of liability uh, and makes you not liable for whatever they're doing on your network blah 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 alright and so now we can go ahead to other user just put in the username which in my case is Jack G and then the password which in my case is Jack it's gonna say the user's password must be changed before signing in so you can go ahead and put in any password you want within the restrictions that were set previously in the last video I'm gonna set it to poop and now it's changing password it's gonna log us in and it's gonna go through like the Windows 10 account creation thing really quickly um, it's just gonna say we're glad you're here as it's setting up the desktop and stuff but it's also gonna go ahead and install Google Chrome onto our account and then we'll also be able to see a um, the files being synced uh, for our folder that we shared earlier alright and so now we're here on the desktop you can see Google Chrome was installed successfully so if I go ahead and launch it we should be able to see Google Chrome perfectly right off the bat so that's really useful if you're at a business and you have a bunch of applications you want to install keep in mind the more applications you add to that install list uh, the longer it's gonna take for them to be able to boot in on their initial boot uh, but now if we go ahead and we go to the folder that was shared which is desktop you'll see status online uh, that means it's ready to start syncing in the folders so if you guys enjoyed this video drop a like down below if you didn't like this video drop a dislike and if you really did tell me why in a comment and tell me what you'd like to see in a future video until next time peace out